All right, so today's lesson, what it's going to be is I want you to learn how to use a breadboard, okay? So you're going to build a circuit on a breadboard. You're going to have to do this for your majority vote, but we're going to start with something simple. So I built a, a circuit. I literally designed this in my head on the way to school this morning. Um, so I didn't design this. I started with this. So I wanted to build this circuit. I wanted you to build this circuit because it has an inverter. It has a an OR and it has two ANDs, right? So here's the circuit that I want you to physically build on your breadboard. Now in multi-SIM what I did was I went in and I turned on the pin numbers so if I right click in a white spot and you don't have to do this now I'm gonna make this, this is a video, I'm gonna save it, you can watch this anytime but if you go down to properties in any white spot and say properties you can tell it in the to say package pin names and then all of your chips will show with the, the, the pin numbers on it. You see how this is pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin uh, 4, 5, and 6? Those are the six pins on chip 2A. You see how those are out, live on the same chip? Because that's U2 and U2 and they're both 08s. That's why when you choose an 08, the first one you choose A, the second one you choose B, this is A and that's B on the same chip. What if you chose A and A? Right, and you get two, you'll end up with two separate chips and then you'll come up here and you'll need a handful of chips rather than just one chip. Make sense? So each one of these chips has four gates on it. You're only using two. Um, if you take a look at the inputs, the inputs are switches and there's only one inverter being used. You see that, this one right here? So that's not A. That's B, right? This is C, and this is D. And they go to the four switches down at the bottom. Here's your OR gate, and here's your output. It's just a probe. So I've already done the design work for you. Unlike the other project, you're going to take this and just build it, right? So that's my goal. My goal is that you're going to just build this. I gave you the truth table so you can see what the outputs should be after you build it. Um, there's the Boolean expression as well. And what's it look like when you build it on a breadboard? You're going to go to the front cabinet, grab your bin, and the only two things you're going to use in your bin are the wiring box. If you look, there's a thing full of wires, and you'll see a breadboard. Okay, you're going to use the wires and the breadboard. Those are really the only things that you're going to need. And I've literally built this myself, and it works. I was surprised. I've got to be honest. I haven't built a circuit since last year. So this is my first circuit. And this is what it looks like. And if you take a look at your, your notes that you have in front of you, your notes show that I gave you kind of like steps. This is how I do it. This might not work for you. You know, whatever works for you, do it. But the first thing I did was I ran switch wires. Then I ran power and ground. Then I powered the chips. I wired the circuits using the pinouts that I gave you also. I wired the LED, which is the output. Check all the wires and do not test it today. Let me test it before you plug any power into that thing. Don't go looking for power supplies. There isn't one in your box, just let it be, okay? So here's the way that it works. If you take a look, you see where it says SWT at the top of this picture up here? Way up at the top, you see where it says SWT right there? All right, those are the switches, S0, S1, S2, and S3. If you look on the actual circuit board down in the bottom, down here, those are buttons. These are the switches. The switches are the slide switches right here, okay? So all I've done is I've wired those directly to the first four rows, all right? On a breadboard, rows... This row right here of five is connected. In this row of five, all these holes are connected. They are not connected this way, and they're not connected across the ditch. Make sense? So when I put my chips in, I put them across the ditch, and my pins won't be short-circuited. All right? So I always put my, my chips in across the ditch. So all I've really done is I've taken my switch and run that wire follow that wire out to the breadboard and stuck it into this row. 
and then I cross that row over to here so that I now have a whole row where I can plug it in if I need to plug into that switch for any reason. I've got that whole row for switches. Does that make sense? Anytime I plug into this hole, I'm going to get that switch or this hole or this hole or this one. See? So for this circuit, I just use this hole. I can use any hole in this row to get that switch. Okay? And I did that for all four switches. You see? Here's my first switch. Here's my second switch. My third and my fourth. Now I did it. One's A, one's B, one's C, and one's D. Uh, Mr. Do I make no do I make zero A in one B? I don't care how you do it, as long as when you flip these four switches the right way, the truth table comes out right. Okay? The probe for this, the output for this circuit is that you see that little yellow LED? And that's because that's this wire right here. You see, I plugged it into Y2 for LED. I gotta be honest with you, any one from R1 to G0. If you have two red, four yellow, and two greens, you can plug it into any one of those, and then one of the, the appropriate one down here will light up. The first prod, first time, people get all excited. They, they, they turn it on, and that little green LED lights up, and they go, yes! That little green LED just means that there's power to the board. Okay, The one you're trying to light up are one of these. All right? And how do I know if my circuit works? Well, if... I go to my truth table every time I get I, I put in 0011, that LED should light up. And the LED should only light up in these cases. All right? That's how I can tell if my circuit actually works. So number one, I wired my switches. So, so now I've got rows and rows of switches. I can just run wires to those switches. And notice, I tried to be really, really neat so that you can follow my wires. If you do that, then somebody else might be able to help you easily. If you don't do that, it looks like a rat's nest, it's gonna be really hard for somebody else to help you, okay, including me. So you kind of want to make it as neat as possible. Um, I have students who just, it looks like a rat's nest. And I'm like, go for it, it's all you, it's all you. And that's fine, but it's your problem, you figure it out, and they're, they're good with it. And they, they figure it out. This is all about problem solving, it's all about, uh, making it work. It, it probably won't work the first time, but let's follow these steps and see what happens. Switches first, wire those, then power and ground the chips. What do you mean? Well, if you remember, the chips had pinouts, and you went and you found these data sheets, and I, I snipped just the important stuff for you today. So if you notice, every one of these, the 04, the 32, and the 08, all have pin number 14 as VCC, which is power, and pin number 7 is ground. Every 74LS chip we ever use, 14 is power, 7 is ground. You have to make sure you get those right. So now watch. You see this VREG under power up at the top and the left? Power, VREG, that's the 5 volts. So I run 5 volts to this plus sign, and look at that. That whole row, see that red line? That whole row is now powered. That's my bus bar. I can now get power from that whole row that's red. My ground is this blue row that says negative. So that whole row is negative. Okay? So look, I powered my three chips. If you look closely, right here, there's a little divot in the chip. A little divot a little divot, a little, or a dot right here. That means that this is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's how you number the pins, okay? So all I did was once I ran power to this long red line, wait a minute, I thought I just said that power doesn't run this way or, or the, the pins don't connect this way. They don't in this portion of the breadboard, but on the bus bar where these two lines are, they do. So VREG is 5 volts, and that goes to this whole line. So ground is this whole line. So look what I did. I just took a wire and plugged it into this row next to pin number 14. 
boom, I've powered that chip, I've powered that chip, and I've powered that chip. Okay? That has nothing to do, that's not on my wiring diagram anywhere. I just have to know to power and ground the chip every time. So how did I get the, the, the ground from this side? How did I do that? You see what I did? Pin number seven, we said, it was always ground. I ran it to ground, ran it to ground, ran it to ground. Don't forget the all-important bus bar wire that brings it from the other side of the breadboard, right? So I take ground from here, ground this whole row, send it over to here and ground this whole row. That cleans up all my wires. Could I just take a wire and stretch it from this hole right here across to these holes over here? Yeah, that would work. That'd work. That'd work too. I'm just trying to keep it clean, all right? So I powered and grounded all of my chips now. Now I have to actually build the circuit from my diagram. So here's how I do it. I take and I put my chips in my board. When we're building SOP, some of products, which I asked you to do for this, this particular project, I put my inverters first. You see the 04? That's my 04 chip. Then I put the AND gates second, and then I put the OR gates third. Why did I put them in that order, do you suppose? We'll take a look. Here's my inverters. Here's my ANDs. Here's my ORs. So I put them in the order that I'm going to actually wire them. All right, so let's try this. Let's go like that, let's go like that, and see if I can make this show up like so. That works well. Okay, so all I have to do is start from here. No, you see this bus bar? See all these wires that are in the background? You see all these, these grounds and powers and blah, blah, blah? This breadboard is pretty special. All that is wired behind the scenes. You don't have to do all that. It's not necessary. So when you need switch A, you just run a wire from S0, from this row from S0, and it just works, okay? So let's see, I need, if I take a look at my diagram, you see my first AND gate up on the board? The first AND gate, pin one, follow it back, has to go to pin two of my inverter. You see that on the diagram? Pin two of my inverter goes to pin one right there. So I come over here, I go pin two from here goes to pin one here. Follow me? That's, that, that's this wire right here. That would be this wire. And then that wire, number one, goes to switch A. Oh look, pin one goes to switch A. Now what I would do, you have that piece of paper in front of you, as you put the wire in the breadboard, put a line through it. I've done it. That one's done. Then I go and I do the other one. I put a line through it. That one's done. And if I follow these down, take a look. My second chip, which is my 08, pin number 2, must go to switch B. Pin number 2 on the second chip right here must go to switch B. See that red wire? Kind of underneath, there it is, there's switch B. Boom. And every time I put a wire in, I put a line through it. Any wire that goes from my inverters to these must go between these two chips. That would be this wire only. Any wire that goes between the ANDs and the ORs, 9 and 10 in my picture, are these two wires right there. And when I'm all done, I send the last one to my output, to the LED that I want. Boom, that's that wire there that I'm ready to test it after you check it all. So on the sheet, again, you've got your pinouts, so you know where, and if you take a look, you can see, so I've used this gate and that gate only on that first chip. On this chip, I've used this gate and this gate, and on this chip, I've used only the first gate. Somebody's asked me before, can I use different, different gates on the chip if I want, if it's easier to wire? Yeah, once you get this and once you understand it, yeah, of course you can. But the goal today is to build this circuit and make it work, all right? 
according to this truth table. So you're going to build this really simple circuit so that it looks like this and then test it. No, I'll, I'll leave this up here. You've got all this. All this is in that folder. The color picture is in the folder. Everything's in the folder. What I want you to try to do, though, is try not to copy this picture. Try to go by the pin numbers, okay? Try it. And if it doesn't work, then copy it, all right? Because eventually you'll get it. Because when you go to try to build your majority vote, um, is your majority vote going to be as simple as A not B or C D? No, it's going to be a little more complicated, right? So this is a really easy circuit. And look at this, these switches. Once you wire these switches, all this, 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 these orange wires up here and my power and my ground to all my bus bars, do I ever need to wire those again? No. Leave them in. Don't ever pull them out. And you can use those all year long, right? So the only thing, and you know what? I would even leave my power and grounds to my chips, and I'd leave my chips in my board too because for the next few circuits, what I'm going to ask you to do for your majority vote project, though, is I'm going to ask you to build your majority vote project on this side. Okay? So you and your partner, well, you don't have partners, but the other class has partners. You and your partner are going to work and build this circuit together. Make it work. Awesome. Then you're going to pick one of your circuits and build it on the other side. So you're really going to build two circuits. But today my goal is that you get this built and we'll test it. Okay? Any questions? Is there anything I missed, you think? Because if you have a question, the other class will too. No? Okay. Um, and remember, I've got mine plugged into Y2. You can plug it into any output. It doesn't matter. Uh, but there's going to be one of the LEDs down here on your circuit board. All right? Great.